Analysis of French Colonial Influences on Print Culture in Indochina, Vietnam from 1890 to 1945 by Hong Nhok Trong. Acknowledgements. I would like to extend my gratitude to Professor Ian Bates for helping and guiding me through my undergraduate thesis. In addition to in-class materials, Professor Ian Bates was always available after class hours for support. Professor Ian Bates helped me frame a conceit and clear research question and research methodology. Finally, I would also like to thank my friends and family for their support throughout my time at Toronto Metropolitan University. Abstract. The colonial period was an important international event that introduced new technologies to developing colonies. France's expansion in Southeast Asia, specifically Vietnam, is the primary focus area of this thesis. The introduction of the printing press revolutionized Vietnamese technology and how people communicate on a larger scale. Multiple perspectives and qualities of life were considered in assessing the success of Vietnam's print culture during the French occupation. Even though the suppression of freedom of speech and the press were present, the print culture continued to thrive setting the foundation for Vietnam newspapers and modern publications. Newspapers were the pinnacle of print culture and Vietnamese adaptations from existing French technology. It allowed Vietnam to publish and circulate patriotic prints while evading censorship. The thesis examined the chronological development of Vietnam print culture through multiple faces and sources, starting from primitive woodblock technology to lithography and letterpress and finishing with the modern printing process and the mass production of newspapers. Secondary sources, such as newspapers from different publications, are presented to showcase the content and print quality. The results demonstrated how the French occupation was essential for the development of Vietnam's print culture. Despite the struggle for political power and the initial purpose of spreading French propaganda through printed matters, education and literacy improved gradually and had a long-lasting impact on patriotism and anti-colonial ideologies. Research Question how did French colonialism impact Vietnam's print culture and print sustainability from 1890 to 1945? Introduction Colonialism was a result of the expansion of greed of Western capitalism. Their impacts can be seen vividly in the development of 35 Asian colonies between 1850 to 1945. France invaded Vietnam in 1857 through orders of Napoleon III. It went beyond missionary to become the upsurge of French capitalism, which generated the need for overseas markets and the desire for a larger French share of the Asian territories conquered by the West. This thesis focused specifically on Vietnam's print culture and social history through the use of print, and compared the sustainability of print culture under the French administration and Viet Minh communist movements. It is important to note that the majority of secondary sources are newspapers because other printed matters such as short books, flyers, and propaganda before 1945 were lost due to long periods of war. The print culture created public and clandestine spheres in Vietnam, which increased the circulation of quoc nhe and information to the illiterate lower classes. Keeping the idea of accessibility in mind, languages and complex theories were simplified for the appropriate audiences. All printed matter existed in one of four stages. The creation and publishing of printed matter through its control by the state to its circulation and appropriation. All four stages were considered and examined to determine the impacts and successes of all printed matters. The thesis further examined the overall public sphere, the audiences of the print culture, how well they understood the information, and how censorship impacted the circulation of patriotic materials. Both the literature review and research methodology examine the diversity and challenges of printing in a censored print culture. When political critiques were censored, religious and Confucianist books and tracts covered this gap and continued to sustain the printing industry. Previous research of the colonial period often only examined the economic, social, and political turmoils emphasizing the results of censorship, but not the actual content being written and their intended audience. This paper will attempt to fill this gap and further examine the development and localization of Vietnamese newspapers. The chronological timeline of printed materials in Vietnam should demonstrate their adaptation to evade censorship 
and the ability to promote anti-French colonialism. The ultimate goal of this thesis was to dismiss the notions that French administrators dominated the print culture throughout their occupation, with studies and sources suggesting that the Vietnamese were able to adapt and evade censorship. Literature Review Throughout the modern history of the 20th century, France's influence can be seen through the progression and development of their respective colonies. Vietnam is arguably one of France's most profitable colonies, which led to a large influx of investments. The country experienced rapid social reforms within 60 years of occupation. This thesis will specifically focus on the development of communication and information as a result of the printing press. Three areas of focus to explore are 1. The transitional period from woodblock printing to lithography. 2. The development of newspapers, printed books, and propagandas throughout the country. 3. The overall impact on education, the spread of information, and quality of life. Introduction to Colonial Setting The conquest and colonization of Vietnam began gradually but accelerated throughout the mid-1800s. Historical data recorded the earliest presence of Catholic missionaries in the 1600s and French traders in the 1700s in Vietnam. Part of their colonization agendas included assimilating the local population to French customs to gain their full support. The Nguyen emperors, nervous about the effects of Catholicism on their people, attempted to nullify missionary activity. The Nguyen's anti-Western policies ultimately hindered their social and technological progress. Most progressions came from China and sparked the invasion of the Turain port. French invaded Turain port in 1857 and pressured the Nguyen government to seek a peace treaty and become a colony of France. The Treaty of Saigon signified an upcoming transitional period in Vietnamese history with social and technological reforms. In this treaty, Tung Duc ceded control of Saigon and Vietnam's three southernmost provinces, including Bien Hoa, Gia Din, and Din Thuong to the French administrator. Together, these territories were to form the French colony of Cochin, China. France was also given sovereignty over Pulo Condor, an island off the southern coast of Vietnam, and full access to the ports of Touraine and Hue. According to the Treaty of Saigon, Emperor Tung Duc and his government became puppets functioning through French endorsements, which allowed French colonizers to expand their control rapidly throughout the country. By the end of 1884, the government in Paris proclaimed the Union Indochinoise, which compromised three Vietnamese regions, Cochin, China, the south, Annam, central, Tonkin, north, as well as Cambodia. Laos would be added to the Union in 1893. Unsatisfied with their expansion in the south, French administrators expanded to the Tonkin region in the north to open trades with China and, at the same time, censor Confucian teachings and information. The following section will examine the history of the printing press, a French product, and its effect on the public sphere in regards to accessibility, social reform, and print culture. Woodblock versus Lithography and Letterpress Print Process Vietnam's print culture before French colonization consisted of engraving woodblocks to print or write on. This print process was exclusive to Buddhist temples and information was reserved for Buddhist teachings and transcripts. During this time, books from China were being reproduced at a slow rate and were only accessible for Buddhist practitioners. The wood blocks were made from bamboo and they can be directly written on or engraved. Additionally, engraved wood blocks can be covered with ink and reprinted on paper. Levels of influence exerted to the public and the information available to them can be categorized into three categories. 1. Temples that wielded a wide influence stretching over multiple provinces. 2. Temples with limited influence on other temples within the province. 3. Temples with no influence on other neighboring temples. The purpose of traditional book printing is oriented towards and limited to 1. Books for the education of resident novices and monks. 2. Books printed for dissemination among the community and populace for the propagation of Buddhism. As early as 1862, the French administration established printing infrastructures in Cochin, China to introduce Western typography and officialize Quoc Nu or the Western Romanized alphabet system. It is important to note that the spread of language was the preparation for future assimilation. Their intention was to use the printing process to speed up the spread of censored information and solidify their occupation status. From existing French technology, the Vietnamese were able to adapt this process and printed their own publications to avoid French censorship. French censorship was considered selective, 
there was a heavy censorship on subversive printed materials with little regard to what information reached the mass majority. In the 20th century, printing on paper such as lithography gradually became more popular and replaced oral modes of communication and old methods of writing on bamboo or wooden strips. One of the first three printing houses to use romanized typography and wood or metal blocks in Vietnam was Imperial de Lang Song in 1868. Father Paul Maheu was an important figure as he brought French technicians, wide format lithographic presses, inks, and newspapers for Imperial de Lang Song. According to Memorial de Quinon in 1922, 18,000 weekly newspaper issues, 1,000 books, and 32,000 other printed materials are printed annually at Imperial de Lang Song, compared to the annual production rate of wood blocks, which was under 100. With this huge influx of information, the general public gradually adapted Kwok Nu'u, or Romanized alphabet, and over time, the level of literacy and accessibility to printing or printed materials increased. Below are two images comparing the quality and consistency of wood block on the left and wide format lithography press on the right. Commercializing printing and the public sphere. Prior to the French occupation, the print culture under the Nguyen dynasty was pale and underdeveloped. For nearly 50 years, from 1802 to 1850, the Nguyen dynasty greatly hindered the development and spread of printing technology as they still relied on woodblock printing and word of mouth. A closed-door period began when the Nguyen dynasty expressed their retaliation against Western countries by cutting off trade indirectly suppressing the adaptation of the press. In addition to poor and corrupted governing bodies, the print networks were also exclusive to certain areas and Buddhist temples. The first emperor of the Nguyen dynasty ordered the people to turn their hidden books and burn the information related to Son Tai rebel forces. Emperor Min Mang, the second emperor of the Nguyen dynasty, also ordered all woodblocks and books to be sent to Hue capital for federal control which greatly reduced the reproduction of literacy for the public. As a result of the public press, the concept of the public sphere was created. The public sphere was defined as the space below the state and above villages, which can be understood as referring to the average citizen with the ability and capability to learn, read, and speak Vietnamese. Hanoi and Saigon were the largest metropolitan cities of Vietnam in the 1920s, so the print culture was able to flourish and became more accessible. Ultimately, these two cities monopolized the production of print matters and became the central hub for intellectual, literary, religious, and political debates. Minor cities in the Annam regions were still under the influence of the Nguyen dynasty and maintained their old Confucianism traditions of life, so little progress was seen until new learning reached the region. When the French administration brought over technology and improved the quality of information, a robust public sphere was created in 1865. We see the first newspaper, Jia Din Bao, the news of Jia Din. Even though it was controlled and run by the French administration, this was the public's first exposure to modern information and the lithography press. Later in 1883, the first publication was owned by Vietnamese students Nam Ki Bao, or Southern News. With heavy French censorship, both publications embraced the read and enjoy print culture meaning information understood by Vietnamese is limited to fictional Chinese tales and non-government related news. Despite censorship, the printing of newspapers aided the spread of information and popularized Romanized Vietnamese alphabet. During this period, the country's print culture from Tonkin, Annam, and Cochin China regions varied due to different levels of French and Western influence. The transformation of Southern print culture was accompanied by shifts in social hierarchy that came to shape the emerging public sphere. In contrast, the Annam and Tonkin region was still under the influence of Confucianism studies, so there was initial resistance to embracing new technologies and Romanized scripts. The print process in these regions included importing and translating books from China to evade French censorship. In these regions, prints from China were considered the new learning. Intellectual elites such as Huyn Tuk Kang and Chan Ki Kap encouraged all to learn both Sino-Vietnamese and Romanized Vietnamese as resistance to the French administrator. They also advocated for overseas travel to other Asian and European countries to embrace new learnings for the purpose of liberation. Vietnamese intellectuals were motivated to learn the new Romanized language system to better understand the mechanism of colonialism 
and reform their country's education. Under the colonial climate, the Tonkin Free School was opened in 1907 and taught through printed textbooks and a Romanized Vietnamese script system. The increase in general education and literacy was the direct result of the printing press. Social reforms, adaptation, and challenges to printers. Newspapers were a significant product of Vietnam's print culture, which signified a transition period to modernity. After the Treaty of Saigon and several decades of French influence, the print culture expanded to the local level where Vietnamese's were allowed to own their own publication house. But at the same time, French censorship was an important factor that limited the growth and development of printing and information in general. In addition to censorship of Vietnamese publications, the repression of the import, publication, and circulation of printed matter went through several phases. From 1908 to 1920, the French anxiously attempted to stop Chinese language materials from entering the country. But from 1936 to 1939, publishing flourished thanks to the policies of the Popular Front from France. The local administrator loosened their censorship and control over publishers, and there was more freedom to print. But this brief period ended because of the oncoming war in 1939. Due to political conflicts between French administrators and communist Viet Minh, Vietnamese accused of being affiliated with the Communist Party were subjected to racial prejudices and unlawful arrests. On October 12 alone, the Saigon Cholon police carried out 77 raids on suspected communism and seized almost 3,000 tracts and brochures. In that month, the French administration shut down 19 communist newspapers and raided bookstores, printing presses, and other stores to seize communist writings. As mentioned in the previous paragraph, French censorship, although brutal, was unorganized and selective, so those who managed to evade censorship were able to create three realms of printing. This can be considered the foundation for Vietnam's print culture beyond 1945. These three realms included Confucian, Communist, and Buddhist prints, and each sector experienced different levels of French censorship. Below are images of printed matters other than newspapers, demonstrating the diversity and capabilities of Vietnamese publishers. When commercial prints were censored, communist prints thrived and to an extent sustained the print culture through hidden small-scale publishers or communist-affiliated publishers. Vichy censors were not simply target political writing. As a Southern police censor puts it, the problem with the Vietnamese was that they liked to read publications that pander to their base instinct. The previous statement addressed the spread of communist prints, which promoted patriotism and criticized French policies. A wide range of communist printed materials, including memoirs and a collection of communist and Viet Minh tracts and newspapers, dating from 1929 to 1931 and 1940 to 1945 from central and northern Vietnam were most common. The spread of communism was adopted by the public via the Romanized alphabet and created a new audience who were literate in Quoc Nhu and possessed some level of support for the Viet Minh Communist Party. The purpose of communist prints was to simplify the Marxist-Lenist concept of communism to the general public by using simple terminologies and real-life examples. In the revolutionary lens, the Communist Party struggled to reach the individual level and the concept of communism was alien and new to the public. Therefore, their print culture was somewhat ineffective over time. The problem was the ongoing status of unified languages in Vietnam, where French, Classical Chinese, Sino-Vietnamese, and Quoc Nhu coexisted. This made the spread of information difficult, as communism concepts were not easily understood by the lower classes. Public and elites were encouraged to study Quoc Nhu for the purpose of liberation. In 1929, Wall Yem, or Hammer and Sickle, was published, and the book was organized in a roadmap structure explaining communist terminologies and revolutionary concepts targeted towards the colonial administrator. The success of this book led to mass production and was considered the central organ of the Indochina Communist Party. Below are two images which showcase the published Ku Kwok newspaper published by Ho Chi Minh and Viet Minh Party. The name Ku Kwok directly translates to save our country. Vietnamese printers improved the print process with stylized titles and smaller font sizes. The newspaper contributed to the mass communication of Viet Minh soldiers 
and patriotic civilians through anti-France articles such as Ting Tan Koi Nye Nam Ki Choi Sai or the revolutionary spirit of southern provinces and Nung Nop Tak Joza or Don't Give Your Rice to the Enemy. Educating the population about the crimes of French occupants was essential to evoking regional revolution and resistance against the French administration. Below are two images depicting the adaptation of French technology for Vietnamese benefits. Research Methodology This section of the paper focuses on the history of press regimes in Vietnam, Volume 1, prior to August Revolution, 1858 to 1945, written by journalist, lawyer, and doctorate Phan Dang Tan. The following sections will provide chronological insights into and development of newspapers in Vietnam under different colonial periods respectively. They will also speak about social impacts and the limitations of newspapers. Newspapers are essential and original methods of mass communication produced by the printing press. With speculation on Western countries, newspapers have been in circulation as early as the 17th century. According to the World Association, it recognizes the weekly relation in 1605 as the first newspaper in the world produced by the Gutenberg Press. From a comparative perspective, Vietnam was far behind the modern world by two centuries and did not possess any form of mass communication. In retrospect, Vietnam had only 60 years to establish and adopt a print culture suitable for Vietnamese audiences. Prior to the newspaper, communication was done orally. A messenger called Mo Lang was responsible for communicating information to lower illiterate social classes in designated areas. In addition to messengers, they were common areas where the imperial family printed and hung notices of announcements for the public, but this only existed in larger cities with a higher literacy rate. The transition from primitive methods of communication to mass communication can be divided into three chronological periods, each with its own adaptations to colony policies. 1. Introduction of newspaper during French occupation in Cochin, Chin. 2. Freedom of press in Cochin, China, according to August 29, 1881 policies. 3. State of press freedom, according to December 30, 1889 policies. Introduction of newspaper during French occupation of Cochin, Chin. It is important to note that this was the period of full-scale colonial assimilation, so every aspect of life and production was controlled by the French administration. Due to France's aggression and overwhelming technological advancement, the imperial Nguyen family was forced to sign multiple treaties in which they forfeited the majority of provinces. French censored newspapers were immediately introduced after their occupation and there were two clear purposes for their circulation. One, occupy and expand the territory, restore security and order in the temporary war zone, and gradually build up a colonial government agency. 2. Step up psychological warfare measures to influence the fighting spirit of the expeditionary army as well as propagate French civilization to all classes of people. The earliest records of the newspaper were owned by the French administration and only published in French and classical Chinese. These were known as Kong Bao or government-oriented announcements with the intent of spreading constitutional and regulatory rights or act législatif and les règlements. With the recognition of the low literacy rate of classical Chinese and more so French, the French administrative introduced a romanized Vietnamese language system called Quoc Nhu U and published the first Vietnamese newspaper, Jia Din News, in 1865. In addition to Jia Din News, French publishers continued to republish Anam, Latin Dictionary or Dictionarium Anamatico Latinum, by J. L. Tubbard. During this period, newspapers were categorized in one of three languages, French, Chinese, or Vietnamese publication, each intended for a specific audience. Along with newspapers, the French aimed to educate the public about Quoc Nhu. Newspaper for the French audience 1. Bulletin officiel de l'expédition de la Cochine Chine The publication published their first weekly issue in September 29, 1861 on 14 by 25 centimeter newspaper. The content included legislations and announcements for native French officers. This could be considered a form of internal communication between the French administrative authorities because only a small number of Vietnamese were able to read French at the time. 2. 
Courrier de Saigon. The second French publication was established in 1864 under supervision of Gaston Amelot. By 1894, the publication was publishing three issues a week with the addition of international economic, social, cultural, and local news from China, Thailand, Japan, and more. The purpose of French publication became clearer in 1899 when the new owner of the publication, Paul Blanchy, used the platform to promote his colonial ideology to contest the current position of Governor General of French Indochina from Paul Dume. According to Fan, French newspapers were cultural weapons that did not require violence to assimilate the population, motivating them to abandon their Vietnamese culture. Newspaper for Vietnamese Scholars and the Public Bulletin des Communes, written in Classical Chinese As mentioned in the previous sections of the Literature Review, the remaining social classes are considered the public sphere, and circulated information also differs from French publication. The intended audience was in smaller areas and villages. Publication only existed as a compensating solution until the public was educated on Quoc Nhu. Jia Din News, written in Quoc Nhu. Although the publication was French owned and operated, this was considered an important milestone and foundation for the newspaper industry in Vietnam. The publication, for the first time, employed Vietnamese writers such as Trong Vin Ki, Quyen Tin Qua, and Trong Min Ki. Trong Vin Ki was employed as rédacteur en chef, or head of publishing. In addition to regular government news, Trong Vin Ki included more diverse topics such as scientific research, history, poetry, folktales, and more, with the intention of spreading and popularizing Kwok Nyu'u. Freedom of Press in Cochin Xin in 1881. The laws of free press were established on July 29, 1881 through Governor A. de Trentignan's office and applicable throughout Cochin, China. The bill included five chapters and 70 clauses, but we will focus on Chapter 1 and 2, specifically addressing newspapers and publications. Chapter 1 L'imprimerie et la librairie. This chapter addressed the freedom of owning private print shops and printed materials that can be sold to the public. Once pre-approved, publications could freely continue to publish their next weekly issues without having to request permission. Chapter 2. Freedom to publish. This chapter laid out the application process to publish newspapers. The applicants were to apply at Parquet du Procureur with the following information name and address of editor and publication office, the publication print materials, and the address of the print shop. These clauses directly helped Vietnamese access print technology and indirectly increased the spread of Quoc Nhu. Although the majority of newspapers in Cochin, China were French-owned and censored, Cochin, China was considered the birthplace of Vietnamese newspapers. Repression of Vietnamese Publications in 1898 By 1898, the French administration realized allowing freedom of the press was dangerous due to the rapid spreading of anti-colonial and revolutionary ideology that encouraged the public to fight back forcefully. They required more control and censorship of newspapers, so a bill was passed to prevent their freedom of Vietnamese publications. In summary, any publications not written in French will be screened and the office can ban them unconditionally. The laws made Vietnamese publishers reliant on French officials to let them print. Many publishers resorted to black market printers to evade French censorship, but this was risky and unlawful. In an article published in 1919 by Nguyen I Quoc or Ho Chi Minh in L'Humanité et le Populaire publication, he criticized the laws of press repression and the exploitation of language to promote the French administration. One paragraph roughly translated to, the French government abused their power to only allow favorable publications which praised them. The government also exploited Vietnamese newspapers for their benefit and promoted their colonial government to receive grants and money from France. Nguyen I Quoc also pointed out the irony of having 20 million Vietnamese, but not even one Vietnamese publication, which made sense because by 1925, there were a total of 121 publications in the country. The table below shows the quantity of documented printed matters in circulation. Vietnam's print culture was created as a means to control the population, but it ultimately became the catalyst for patriotic movements and aided the spread of anti-French ideology. As time progressed, 
Printing techniques improved with the introduction of graphic prints in 1949. In a sense, Vietnam print culture embodied the meaning of newspapers being both informative and entertaining. In conclusion, the original intention for introducing the print culture was for complete control and repression of the population. However, the adaptation of French technologies eventually aided the education and revolution of the Vietnamese. When physical revolutions were not possible, there was intellectual resistance to French colonial colonial ideology instead. Perhaps the studies have shown that whilst despised, the French colonial period was essential for setting the foundation of the print culture and long-lasting patriotism in Vietnam. Result. Through the research of this paper, it is safe to conclude that the assimilation process was extremely difficult due to ongoing political conflicts, and commercializing print at the turn of the 20th century had different regional effects. The French occupation was an essential factor in setting the foundation of Vietnam's modern print culture. There were many new realms of printing created under the influence of the French administration and the Viet Minh Communist Party respectively. The effectiveness of their print culture also heavily relied on the receiving audience, which was mostly illiterate in Quoc Nhu. This paper offered critical views on the effectiveness of the new print culture and the printing process at the administrator and public levels. The success of Vietnam's print culture during the French colonial period was not definite because there were various levels of success and failures at different periods in time. Despite the slow spread of information, this was an important period for Vietnam because it was a stepping stone for the rapid development of print after independence in 1945. The analysis of the secondary sources indicated important milestones for Vietnamese publications and newspapers. The results also reinforced the dictating role of French administration in the print culture, and the print culture that existed under French control. Censorship intentions were beyond press repression. It was also the suppression of ideology, free speech, and human rights. Kindly refer to Table 2 in the appendix for collected data on banned publications as it recorded a common ban pattern on patriotic publications. Although French censorship had near complete control of the print culture, it did not prevent Vietnamese's from adopting the technology and using it for their patriotic movements. Understanding the complex relationship between print culture and politics was essential for assessing the success of a country's print culture. Discussion My original prediction was that a seamless adaptation of the printing press and the spread of information was constant throughout the colonial period. But research has proven that printing and print culture had dependencies on government policies and political turmoils. I believe that the chronological framework effectively describes the development of Vietnam's print culture and who has access to print and information. It was clear from the results that the French administration and Viet Minh Party dictated the print culture in Vietnam. We can interpret that the print culture was built and established by French colonialism but sustained by the communist movement. Reproduction of this study will result in similar results but there is more to speculate upon. The result of adapting Quoc Nhu from the previous sections, Quoc Nhu was essential for the development of newspaper and mass education of a new language system. Those in favor of spreading Quoc Nhu believe that Vietnamese should have an internationally recognized language system because language is a part of national identity. From a larger scale, Quoc Nhu simplified communication and information became more accessible to the public. Quoc Nhu was easier to understand and learn compared to classical Chinese or French, which increased the influence of the communist movements amongst lower social classes. Quoc Nhu allowed readers to convey and understand complex terminologies and ideologies. It would have been nearly impossible to explain communism or science researches in classical Chinese. Further research in this section should also focus on the advancements in education and schools as a result of Quoc Nhu. Resistance to new method of education was present at the time, and Quoc Nhu education was not common amongst Vietnamese. Newspapers played a significant role in setting the foundation and promoting the love for a new language system. How did Quoc Nhu change in stigma of being an evil or colonizer's language through mass education and reform? Post-colonial print culture? The post-colonial period was an important time for the development of print and newspaper. Vietnam was occupied by America after World War I, and along with their occupation, they also introduced the American print culture. 
American occupation in the South was vastly different compared to French occupation. There was more freedom of press and emphasis on the quantity of printed matters. America spent resources to build the city of Saigon into an economic hub in Indochina, therefore giving the Vietnamese more freedom and human rights. Citizens of Saigon were considered American to an extent in regard to benefits. During this period, most of the country became literate in Quoc Nhu, and the entertainment aspect of newspapers developed strongly. Research in this period should focus on the development of newspapers in the South with the introduction of American newspapers and the results from the freedom of press. The American occupation brought over a new period of tactical and cultural warfare and newspapers were an effective way to divide the country's support. Citizens of Saigon were given rights similar to American citizenship, similar to countries such as Korea and Taiwan, which included freedom of press. Based on the differences in policies regarding freedom of speech and press from the North and South, the Southern regions of Vietnam became supportive of the American administrator and ultimately worked for them to earn benefits. Perhaps the success of the print culture in this period was dependent on how information was used to persuade the Vietnamese to join American forces and administrators. The circulation of printed information from the United States helped solidify the idea of being American and promoted them to strive for the American dream. At one point, Saigon was named the Pearl of the Far East with more freedom and faster economic growth than any other countries in the region. This was also the prime time of billboards, hand-painted and printed, so more printers adapted wide format presses to produce commercially. Conclusion this study aimed to provide a chronological and critical analysis of the unique case of Vietnam print culture and what is considered the foundation of modern Vietnamese newspapers. In summary, the French administrator was essential in establishing print technology and culture in Vietnam. They helped set the foundation of newspaper printing in Vietnam with the supply of technology and funds. Over time, Vietnamese's had the opportunity to learn and adapt this technology to their own needs. The study also provided multiple viewpoints from different social classes and their accessibility to the print culture. Vietnam had a unique development timeline where there were constant struggles for power and who dictated the development of the print culture. Common argument was French censorship suppressed both freedom of speech and press, but studies have shown that their suppression was essential for igniting patriotic print movement. The most important party was the audience, because their ability to access printed matters determined the success of their print culture. Upon establishment, the mass public was illiterate and unable to read newspapers, but within 20 years, there were enough readers to help spread information. The spread of information and technology was extremely rapid, so it is safe to conclude that the print culture during the colonial period was successful for the Vietnamese with regard to the quality of printed matters and education of the mass public. Evaluation of selected secondary sources and framing them chronologically was a good way to understand the growth progress of print culture. This research method effectively demonstrated the growth of newspapers and the changes in their purposes and target audiences.